Hey, I'm right in the middle of uh, calibrating my oscilloscope, a um, TDS 744A. And it took me a while to get this set up together. And I wanted to share a few things that I've learned. Um, there's a lot of info already um, scattered around forums and other YouTube videos. Uh, there's a few things though that weren't really obvious to me anyway. And the reason for getting into all of this is to solve a couple issues, uh, mainly one. If I'm looking at a single signal at high sample rates like this, uh, everything's okay until I go to the, the higher sample rates, uh, because at some point it needs to uh, multiplex its, uh, its, its two or four internal ADCs, because each of them is only good to 500 mega samples per second. And then the waveform would look all wrong like this, where it looks like there's two, or if I zoom in really far enough, it looks like a sawtooth. Uh, but I, I guess the thing is, they're offset by, I think this one is 10 or 15 nanosecond, I forget. I was fairly certain that at least one of the attenuators in this scope had been replaced at some point, so maybe they just never did the calibration again or didn't notice the problem. Another thing I wanted to improve was the DC offset. Even with the ground coupling, I would see about uh, 10 or 20 millivolts of a DC offset. And finally, the the trigger was a bit off. As you can see here, this is a 10 megahertz signal, and as I change the trigger level to about zero volts, uh, the trigger point isn't right in the middle. Either it's uh, there's a time offset, a, a wrong delay, or the level is is wrong for the trigger. So hopefully I can get that solved too. Uh, the method I chose is to go with the uh, old DOS computer. Of course, I threw out the last com computer I had with uh, ISA slots about two years before I got the scope. Anyway, so I had to buy a new one. Um, and you need the ISA slot to get this GPIB interface card. And not just any of them. One of them, one of the models that are supported by the Tiktronix uh, field adjustment software. Uh, a bit more on that later, maybe. Oh yeah, it's just booting up here. And let me see. Oh yeah, I'm running FreeDOS actually, and FreeDOS is really, really very nice. So it lets you do these uh, sort of conf uh, configuration options. These are all part of uh, the autoexec.bat, so I added one option at the last here to uh, load the uh, National Instruments GPIB instruments. You only want those if you're uh, dumping the calibration data or the firmware. If you want to run the adjustment software, I think it won't work, so you need to just boot into straight DOS. I'm using this one here. All right, I'll come back to, come back to that later. Uh, so GPIB card, uh, cable going to the Tektronix, it's all good. Then for the uh, for the basic calibration, the first part is the CVR. That's the I think it's calibration voltage reference. And in the documents, it says you need this uh, super expensive uh, data precision 8200 8, unit. And I've been looking at these on eBay for a while. There's the Data Precision 8200, or um, I think there's also the EDC 501, which is uh, similar in specifications. And now and then they'll pop up for a couple hundred dollars, 700 metric dollars, this one. And wow, a uh, reasonable $3,000. How do they even get that? Anyway, sometimes they, they go for the same price, broken or sold as is. So in any case, it's always way more than what the, the entire scope usually sells for. So that kind of was discouraging. One of the things I considered well is, well, how hard can it be to make one? Like a, a toned down version that doesn't need uh, one part per billion drift and accuracy. Uh, so this, for example, is I guess the heart of the, the 8200. It's a bunch of, uh, of DACs here, all with a different scaling, so 1K, 8K, 64, and again, 1 and 8, so they all go through this, what is that, 447, so it all goes into some uh, fancy amplification and some relays, oh, there you go, 20-bit DAC. 
So okay, that's that's one way of uh, going at it. Or there's uh, this method used in the, the Valhalla 2701, and I think some of the flute calibrators do something a bit similar. I found this pretty elegant. The, um, they generate two, two PWM signals, um, both uh, positive and negative polarity. It drives an H bridge here. This is a voltage reference. So it takes a PWM, uh, scales both of them uh, with the, the ratios. I think it's about 1,000 to 1. And then some filtering, then onto the amplifier here. And uh, another fancy amplification with uh, a bunch of stuff to get the high voltage output. I think it could go to 1,000 volts or something. In the end, I decided to go for something that I could uh, easily breadboard, just for a proof of concept. It's work in progress, obviously, but what I have essentially is a 5 volt reference, that's just a regular la um, linear regulator, and I have three pots there, and they all have a different scaling. They're the same, uh, they're random values, but it doesn't matter there. They're buffered through this um, LM324, like the worst possible op amp. So I have a coarse, medium, and fine adjustment. And I have, uh, oh yeah, before that, I go into this uh, buffer with a NPN pass element, and then I hook up my probes to the multimeter on this BNC adapter so I can monitor the voltage that's going to the scope. So uh, it's just a manual feedback loop where I twiddle these knobs and look at the readings there, and it's it's actually pretty decent. I let this warm up a bit, and I can set it to 9.5 volts, so 9.500 something, and the last digit, so less than a millivolt, it'll drift around a bit, but it's still very good, and it doesn't need to be stable for 10 hours straight. It just needs about 20 seconds per setting, maybe 30 seconds, I'm not sure. So you set it to 9.5 volts, make sure it's good, and you just go back here and say, okay, press enter, then it does its thing, and it says, okay, change it to minus 9.5. So then I flip the leads around, just make sure it's still good, and continue. So I have 9.5 volts, and I, then it asks zero, um, yes, not 0 0.95 volts, and I had a bit of trouble for that, uh, with that at first, because it was really near the, uh, the bottom range of those uh, pots, and like those sliders when you're really close to the ends they're not that great so what I did was just uh, throw in a, a different feedback resistor in the, the output feedback there so instead of a gain of um, 4 I think I had a gain of 1 for that range so that was a bang on I really uh, managed to get it right on on 0 0.95 did that and the last step is a bit harder, well not really, it's 95 millivolts so I did the same thing, I went on that gain resistor and changed it again and that worked out pretty nice so that's it for the CVR part, so with this piece of garbage I didn't need to buy the, uh, the special calibrator uh, next step, this is where I'm at now, is the HF calibration I was uh, kind of waiting uh, on this repair uh, because this this my uh, 4195 it only goes to to 500 megahertz and I thought oh well I'll be fine this is a 500 megahertz scope but no it wants 505. Well, that actually wasn't really much of a secret. If you go into the adjustment softwares, uh, the files, if you go into HFCal for well my scope needs the dot 500 here. And if you scroll down, you can see it's hard to guess exactly what it's up to, but you can see it's going to ask a p-table. Let's see, 505E6. It looks a lot, a lot like a frequency, and 20 uh, uh, amplitude. Maybe I'm not sure. It also asks for 455 megahertz, and then it goes through a bunch of different ranges. A more serious problem was the amplitude required for the last uh, setting. It needs 4 volts peak to peak. That works out to a plus 16 or plus 17 dBm. And as it turns out, 
That's not so common. It, not every f uh, signal generator is able to go that high. Or in the case of mine, this is an HP 8643. It says you can go beyond plus 13, but it's uncalibrated, and like, they won't tell you exactly how high it goes. In the case of mine, not high enough. So the solution I found was instead of shopping forever to find either, either a Fluke a 6061 or some of the others, I just bought an RF amplifier. Nothing fancy, I just uh, made sure it was able to produce at least uh, 20 dBm, which uh, should be plenty enough for what the calibration uh, requires. And I just failed the uh, HF calibration. I ran into a couple issues. Um, one of them... Well, I don't think that's a big problem because it seems to be compensating, but my amplifier there has a bit of a DC offset. That's why uh, those two cursors there were moved a bit lower, because I think it figured it out, but it's uh, it's testing at super low amplitudes, like the scale set as one millivolt vertical per division. I'm at the step where it wants 455 megahertz, so I set that up. It's set to uh, 1.5 millivolts on the screen, but it keeps, uh, it says, uh, well it doesn't like, clear the screen, but it says frequency set to 8.3 no, 8,000 megahertz, and I, I tried a couple of different amplitudes and still didn't work. Well, interesting. I finished the channel 1 part of the HF calibration. The really problematic ranges were the f first ones where it's like 1 millivolt per div. And I think I got a plan, a better plan for channel 2 now. Uh, the first few ranges I'll do with a 20 dB attenuator without the amplifier. The other thing I noticed is first it, it uh, tells you to set the frequency to 6 megahertz uh, just for six divisions like plus or minus uh, plus three to minus three divisions and then it tells you okay change the frequency to 505 and it it moves the, those cursors a bit closer and I thought I was supposed to readjust the amplitude to match those cursors again. But I think not. Because when I did that, after each each um, each scaling, for a split second, like, this computer is way too fast, so it would show a 505 megahertz uh, minus 2.3 dB failing. So I think the, I think the minus 2.5 or whatever it says was exactly what I was adjusting here to bring that signal back into the cursors. So I noticed that about halfway through, then I stopped doing that, so set the amplitude at 6 MHz uh, to those two cursors, let it, do, let it do its thing, then when it asks you to move to 505, then just change the frequency and assume that this signal generator is fairly flat, and I did verify it a bit earlier, and it's, it's reasonably flat, well, flatter than this scope is probably going to be. So I'm going to try that for channel 2, see how that goes. Okay, for example, uh, this is, yeah, this is the worst. One millivolt per div. It sets those cursors there. I set roughly what I thought was a good uh, amplitude. There's a bit of an offset. So it tells me amplitude is 6.8 frequency, 6. Point blah, blah, blah. It tells me to try again, basically. So I just tweaked the amplitude a bit. Uh, I think this is going to be better. Let me see. Press enter. Does a couple of things there. Ah, perfect. So it readjusted the cursors, see? To take into account the offset of my generator, which is a pretty nice thing to do for me. And now it asks, asks me 455 megahertz. That one's really, really a pain. Uh, basically, frequency 455. Five. All right. Now, let's see if I don't change the amplitude and I just go ahead with this. Is it going to work? Aha. Frequency is 841. Uh, so, I think all this noise and trash is throwing off its uh, frequency calculation. So, well. 
try and just uh, skip past this. Okay, so when it says failing, unless you go through the whole thing, and then at the end I just finished channel 4, it says, um, recommend the instrument be repaired before continuing, blah blah blah. Let's see what happens there. Temperature set. I don't know, sure. What do they want to know? Failing. Yeah. <laughs> Test failed 11 steps. Well, there's about 300,000 steps, so that's actually not that bad. Okay, what's the next test? Alright, yeah, maybe I should be doing the uh, the interleave first, because uh, I kind of suspect that might be uh, causing problems. That and maybe trigger position calibration, those are pretty interesting, let's see what that does. Let's start with the interleave, I don't know what I'm going to need for this step, probably just the signal generator. No attenuators. Uh oh. This gets interesting, so I need to route the signal to channels 1 and 2. And I'm guessing it will want pretty close, closely matched lengths of cable. I think I can do that. I think this is a new record for a worst possible adapters. I'm going from N to SMA here to BNC, to BNC female, back to BNC male, into the T, back to BNC, then SMA, and BNC again. <laughs> Let's see what it wants. Come on. Wow. I just finished the uh, interleave. It went fairly well. It is pretty hands-on. It, uh, it takes about five to ten seconds every step then you gotta change over the connections and I think due to my sort of botched CVR cal from yesterday the gain isn't quite the same on I think channel one or two is the worst it's a few percent off so uh, I just had to tweak the amplitude uh, now and then just to keep it inside those uh, six divisions that it asked for Well, I figured out part of the reason why my uh, HF calibration was failing. The reason is RG58. I got my power meter hooked up to uh, the end of the cable I was using for the calibration. Uh, so what I did first was take that uh, sensor and hook it up directly to the end connector to get the calibration plane right on the output. I set minus 20 dBm, set it at uh, 10 megahertz. And I got a reading up there of uh, minus 20.02. Then I changed the frequency to 505, and it was still bang on. Like it might have within, I wrote it down here somewhere, within like less than 0.1 dB for sure. And I did the same test with uh, this cable, and I'm getting minus. 0.64 dB of loss through this cable and the adapters, which is exactly what RG58 should give me at 500 megahertz. I should have thought of that before, but I thought it was less of a problem. Yeah, that cable is, uh, it's about 0 0.3, 0 0.3 dB per meter at this frequency, I think, roughly. So I'll, I'll know what to look out for next time. Alright, just finished the trigger position calibration. It was pretty painless. Um, the instructions tell you to switch between the an SG503 and an SG504. They're both signal generators, but uh, like a, a modern unit like this pretty much replaces both of them because this one can go, can go down all the way to uh, I think 22 megahertz is the lowest frequency it asked me. And amplitudes are roughly... I forget. Uh, average <laughs> 0 dBm plus or minus give or take and you switch between frequencies and 
I think you do it every, you do everything on channel one. It takes about 20 minutes. And now it looks an awful lot better. That trigger is right in the middle, and this is a that's 15 megahertz, I think, or 150. I was at fif was at 15 megahertz, but now this is 500, and it's bang on, like right in the middle. Perfect. All right, uh, a bit of progress on the HF cal. Actually, yeah. Oh, interesting. I just went through uh, the HF cal for channel one, and it doesn't appear on the list anymore, probably because it passed. Um, what I did this time was I used the same garbage cable, but what I did was uh, after setting the amplitude at six megahertz, it tells you to do the six division thing, so you do that, just the amplitude, then I take a look at how many uh, what the power setting was, let's say minus ten point eight dBm. I do the thing. And then it would ask me to go to 505. I'd go to 505, but I'd also manually compensate the amplitude, so I'd bump it up by 0.6 dB. And I went through the whole thing, and it went pretty well, no errors. And uh, it wasn't that bad. So I think I'll go through the, uh, the other channels, and, uh, and I think that'll be it.